If you want to be my friend, you better go and get a pen. And maybe we can keep in touch. Like I did in the old days, it wasn't so long ago. And I wish you well. Oh, that's my Rado. That's my Rado. Yes. Uh, that's vibrato. That's vibrato-esque. It's not. Oh, no. it's esque. Your glasses Is it vibrato-esque? are Oakley's. These are Oakley's. I remember. Do you Pretty great to stay on your face. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And if you call right now. If you call right now. If you act fast, you too can also have brain damage based Oakley's, on. Oakley's? When we were right. in junior high and high school, Oakley's were the coolest fucking sunglasses. Yeah. And wraparounds. Yeah. Would you wrap very professional baseball player wraparound. Would you guys ever put, like, when you weren't wearing them on your eyes, would you wear them backwards? Like, like go- I'm sure like I have. professional golfers do? Yeah. I'm sure I have. Like, with their hats on, professional golfers, when they're going to putt, and it's like, they go like, it's like this uh-huh. on the back. And it Why? doesn't look cool. It, lo- it doesn't look cool if you don't have a hat on. But if you have a hat on, they do. Well, I think it looks pretty damn cool right now, you're dude. you're looking down to putt, and I guess maybe they could slide off. Fair enough. And then you're like this. Oakley's were just the epitome of cool. Yeah. If you had Oakley sunglasses. Yeah. And I don't know why. And they were so expensive. Yeah. I remember the pair I had, and they are... They're probably back in style now. Do you still have them? No, but I do have a pair of sunglasses. I'm on my third pair. I have had these sunglasses since 2011, and I'm on my third pair of them. They don't make them anymore. What is the brand? Versace. And they don't make that one. They don't make those frames. Yeah. I was remember I really wanted sunglasses, and I, I, I tend to not glasses. Sunglasses just almost never fit me, and I, I think I just have a large. Featured head. Like I don't know. Wide head. Maybe yeah. Seven. I have seven, a wide head. I'm seven and five eighths. On my when I get fitted frames, head. I have to like get it. Be like, hey guys, if it's not wide enough, I'm gonna get a headache because this is too tight against the tip. Yes. And so I was at the Beverly Connection in a sunglass hut, and Dragging. I was just putting on <laughs> wow, okay. sunglasses until I found ones that fit, and I found one, and they fit perfect, and they looked good. And then I took off, and I looked on the side, and it isn't like the gaudy. The uh, like gold coin shit that they all do. Yeah. It just in little letters just says Versace. And I looked at the price. And I think they were like 150 bucks. I was like, motherfucker. Is that how you say it? Versace? I saw it. it is how I said it. Oh, but it, is that how you say it? I, you could. Here we go again. What? It's, I mean, everybody says it's Versace, right? But is it Versace? It's V E R S A C E. And you're saying Versace. It's okay to take. Well, here, you want to get into this? Yep. Okay. Are you saying it's okay to take liberties? Well, you tell me. Is it a GIF or a GIF? Well, I've never known. It's GIF. Okay. I think that's and, what I said. And people go, uh, it's GIF. And I'm yeah. like, well, the guy who created it, yeah. the reason it exists, yeah. calls it a GIF. Yeah. And I tend to go by what somebody... Wait, why did he... Oh, that's just how he thought the G should sound. I, I have no idea. GIF. GIF. Yeah. And My- everybody's like, it's GIF. And I'm like, it's... If you want, if you want to be gift to you, I'm not going to fight with this. But I'm being called on verse on my Versace. Versace. Yes. So, PCs. And that is joking. Get off it. All of this. I and and for the record, I only bring all this up. Well, PCs from is a man. You. PCs is who you wants to doing make sure wrong. you call him Daniel. Yes. You cannot take liberty with that. Why? Well, I'm saying you say that. If Reese's says to me, it's not PCs. Wait, is that a I'll person stop. we could contact? They're dead. Reese is probably not around. <laughs> to find out that it's her candy would be bizarre. And amazing. <laughs> it would be great. I would take her if Reese told me, if she said it. She, has to, she has to say it to my face, and we get to have one drink. <laughs> we have to have a drink. What's the drink? Paper Ooh. planes. Oh, my God. I'm on a big on a paper plane kick. Paper uh, planes? Yeah, I mean, you know me. Paper planes? I mean, the margarita, no Paper salt, rocks, yeah. obviously. Uh, Cabin Supreme, either one of those I'd yeah. be happy with. I don't think I care much about margaritas. I've you never been salt. I know I don't want salt You could have asked Reese. What? If it's Reese's Pieces. We never got that. And I'm over We never got that it. close. Really Reese's Pieces. <laughs> We're not close enough to get to something so in, such an intimate subject. <laughs> but it's called Jif. 
And then, look, I'm not going to fight with you. Everybody wants to call it GIF. My Go issue there ahead. is the G stands for graphics. I know, but uh, he said it. I know that he said it. And I'm just saying, for me, what's challenging is the G stands for graphics, which is a G sound. And like, I'm which willing to agree, GIF. what an idiot. But I, st- but if G he stood got for to, George, he gets to name it. But what if he got it wrong? He, of course, he got it wrong. If it's supposed to be graphics, but he gets to name it. Yeah, I actually am with Lissa here. That's I'm fine. Say, Everybody calls it GIF, but I it is a GIF. I'm gonna go one step further. I don't even know what it technically even is. I don't even know why I care. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great point. <laughs> I don't, but there is a little part of me. I'm like, but I don't correct. I just, but it's. I will say though, uh, when I walk past Gucci, I assume it's Gucky. <laughs> Hold on, it's not. Are y'all selling Guckies in here? They're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a duck that starts with a G. <laughs> well, it's like earlier today you said Redfin, and you yeah. know they created that company to be redefined. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and nobody. Gave a fuck. <laughs> I don't know anyone who doesn't say Redfin. Well, right. Because they changed it because everyone was like, you're the stupid. The market told them. Because the market told them, no, it's like, Redfin. Remember yeah. the, on that thing you do, they wanted to be called the Wonders, O-N-E. Yeah, one, yeah, and yeah. so everyone called them the Oneaters. And so they ended up just changing it to W-O-N. So they, so yeah. they just went with Redfin because Redefine is stupid. Another, yeah. one, I'll do one more and then we have to go because okay. this one does, does sort of bother me because I know that the, the person who created it cares. Yeah, it's just Eagles, and Wait, you'll what? hear classic rock stations DJs. You'll let everybody go. We got one coming up from the Eagles. Oh, the Eagles. It's just Eagles. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Fry, I believe, told. There's a story of Steve Martin, him being like, "Oh yeah, I love you should yeah the Eagles is great," and he's like, "No man." just eagles and people go but it's the eagles and i go okay but do you say you love that new that 80s song from the journey (laughs) no it's just journey yeah yeah and it's the same thing you have to it has to change the vernacular is not the right word but the the noun or the version in which you look at it yeah yeah, it's just eagles eagles i love eagles man eagles are great yeah yeah. it does feel weird because everybody always says the but it's the band is called eagles Eagles. yeah yeah then another band called the beatles Beatles. You mean Beatles. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> leave leave oh, that God. in. Oh, God. That's her bleeding. I die. Oh, my so mouth, blood yeah. is suddenly coming out of my mouth. Well, dude, Daniel. that got me for a second. Paint? Yeah, but it's red. That's red blood. Okay, let's take a break. We'll, we got to put this back all together. I got to resettle. Okay, we'll take one Briaki and we'll be right. Briaki. Red Redfin. Let's go! go to the oh, did it get eaten? What was the bird's name? Come on. Why do we think of the same things at the same time? What was it? Well, you named it. I always liked Michael Tweeten. I was supposed to put out a second poll. I think Michael Tweeten is it. Yeah. I'm gonna call it Michael Tweeten. Letty Letty got the most votes, but then you guys said no. Because <laughs> s- we decided to treat it like the uh, it's electoral our college. And prerogative. Then you, yeah. And then you asked me to post a new poll with new names, and then I forgot. I don't remember what they even do you remember what the names uh-huh. were? Uh-huh. Well, Michael I mean, Tweeten. This is the last public episode, so we'll this you is guys the pu- find last out on the other episode, side. So we have to settle it today. I will post. No, we don't. Now I will. It will it'll be settled on the other side. We'll definitely post the poll on the page. But, but we should wait. To, we should wait to do the poll because so many people are going to be joining us. We want to give them I'm a saying. chance to vote. I'm going to wait. Yeah. I yeah. just keep repeating what you are also <laughs> saying. So why don't, don't you wait? Like, we want to give them a chance to vote. The guys who have like nixed the first vote. <laughs> but so the new we want to get we want their voices to hey, be heard. People should have a chance to speak. <laughs> Um, but the new, the three new names that you guys decided. Ooh, do you remember any of them? Michael Tweeten, right? Michael Tweeten's one of them. Yeah, yeah. You left Letty in there in yeah. case everyone re-votes for Letty. You they came, might. Daniel, you came up with Letty. That was your name. I don't, I'm not on it anymore. <laughs> the third one is Jody Tweeten, which also was you. And I'm not on that one either. It's Michael Tweeten. So are we not even posting a poll? No, let's post it. But if Michael <laughs> Tweeten doesn't win, that's what it will be. <laughs> the most 
pointless <laughs> poll there ever was. So you might as well vote for Michael Tweeden. Mm-hmm. But truly, I would like to know people's honest opinion <laughs> over those two. Michael Tweeden or Letty. I would actually like to get to know our audience. Do they, uh, is everyone like, Letty's better than Michael Tweeden? Or if you have followed us since the beginning right. and you know how that is our white whale of a guest is Michael Keaton, why would it not be so perfect to be called Michael Tweeden? Like, that truly is perfect. I agree. So we'll take Jody Tweeten off the table. But we are, if it's a post, people are allowed to do write ins. Because if someone wants to blow us away with something that I'm will not, also lose to Michael Tweeten, I'm fine I'm with it. I'm not over... Someone wrote in Reba, and that was the name of the mail carrier. The mail carrier on Rita. Pee-wee's Playhouse oh. was Reba. Uh, Reba. Oh, Rita. I see what you're saying. R-E-A-D. Michael Here's what I want to put out there. Michael Heine-ho. If you've got... If you have... Th- this is it. You have to submit... Get your entries in now. But if you think you can... If you think you can beat, we're gonna do a poll in Michael a month. Tweeten. We'll do a poll in a month, at best. Time, if you subject, can beat Michael Tweeten, give us a name. It doesn't have to be a pun. If it can be clever, yes. But Michael Tweeten is kind of perfect. Thank you. And that's what it will be. But I would be interested. <laughs> but let's hear what you guys have to say. But yeah, and then we'll do a vote. And then we'll vote. Yeah. And then and we'll just re-vote. like the last election. We will, we will decide who wins. You guys are the electoral college. Yep. Yes, exactly. Yes. Ah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. This is a, this is a insane this is an insane ending to our public domain shows. <laughs> What's Bernie's last name? Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders not going to beat Michael Tweeten. No, happy but, to have but it. we we rigged the election so Bernie Sanders doesn't. Oh, yeah. It takes some of the votes. Bernie Sanders versus Michael Tweeten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Trying to think of a Hillary Clinton pun. I just read the letter. Hey, pals. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Oh, great. Isn't losing someone you love just the worst? Isn't it awful to Sad want to talk to someone about one specific thing so bad, knowing they're the only one you can talk to about said thing, and you know they're gone forever, and all you wanted to do was call and laugh about something stupid? Isn't it the worst? And we all go through it. It's a strange feeling. It's sad. And I thank you for giving me a place to get that out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, though, it's come to this. That a good friend of yours that you've been scheming with says it's over. The jig is up. You're busted, and it's time to get out of town. You got 24 hours to even think about being able to keep the money you've stolen or not. They don't know who you actually are or who your family is. So the one good thing is they'll be safe. The Whoever's coming to get you in 24 hours. So yeah. They're not going to come after your family. You you just have to stay gone. So what's your move? Your your partner's gone and you may not get a goodbye with the family. You've got to get gone, find a new identity. They f- then find a new life somewhere. How do you start? A fake ID, a fake social? You need to become someone else quick. So how? Personally, I used to do a lot of coke, so I so do I track down an old old they wrote that shady shady connection really don't have any more to oh really don't have any more as in connections to see if they even have shadier connections do i do the movie thing head to a dive bar both here and where i'm headed and just happen upon criminals who know it all whatever you do it works you make it out money is great you're now known as Philip Jacks. And your old fam is safe. Is it goodbye to friends, family forever? With your new criminal hookups, do you keep an eye on them? Probably, but uh, are you even really ever, do you ever re enter their life? 5, 10, 15 years. Can you get them out? All the new identity stuff will become easy to handle eventually, but that start. How do you kick it off? Where's your new life? Can't wait to hear. Love you and pal Nash very much. Jeff Brantley. Song for the playlist. Flutes of the Shy by Ween. Oh. Okay. Bing, bong, bing, bing. 24 hours. Yeah. New identity. I'm shaving all of my facial hair and my head. Is this what we're talking about? Sure. 
I'm going to start there. Really? I think I'd look very different. You know what I think? <laughs> Speaking of, I think I'm going mustache summer. Mustachioed. Mm-hmm. This summer. Mm-hmm. You're going to do it. Mm-hmm. All right. You're going to have a bit of a mustache summer. All right. Um, that's probably a good bet. I always wonder that, why people keep their hair and facial hair when they're on the run. Yeah. I'm like, what are you that I think committed I, to it? I know. Hey, I don't want to die, but I cannot shave. I can't look awful. Right. <laughs> I'm a bearded man. Right. I just bought this blue this blue nondescript hat. Yeah. I mean, here's the irony though. Like I think th- it's jarring anyways, but I think bald me, I don't think I have a good shaped head. From what I can from what I can gather from touch, I don't think I have a good shaped head. So, college, high school was the last time you had the closest thing to a shaped yeah, head. Yeah, probably. Yeah. College. Late college, but I would think that uh, I would think that it may, maybe it would look so awkward that I would almost stand out in a in a reverse. You'd be memorable, catch twenty two kind of way. Yeah, but that would be my first move. I would get rid of all my facial hair and the hair on my head. This is a sort of a Gone Girl question, right? Yeah, because she she does this. Yeah, cool girl that she is. Yeah. Um, where in the country would you go? Alaska feels like a good one. Mexico. Alaska might be too depressing where you go, I'd just rather get killed, I guess. I wonder that, too. <laughs> if any Alaska Isn't that listeners, that, obviously, that, I'm joking and sort don't of a feel that in a very I real way. I mean, man, there's that one town that's all in one building. That's right. That would be... Northern Exposure. Oh, I loved that show. Holly? I never watched it. Really? It was I don't on think a, it was it, for you me. Know, it was in syndication up at the cabin. It wasn't for so me. So it always come on after the news. I don't even know what it's about. WISC3. Huh? What's it about? Northern radio Exposure. show. Northern Exposure? It's sort of like Doc Holliday. Wait, what did you say? It's about a radio, like a radio show. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, he narrates it. But well, it's about yeah. the guy that moves there who's a big time doctor. Oh, right? it's like Doc Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that guy was good. That actor. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he got canceled. <laughs> um, what? But do you think Wyoming? Th- so Omaha. I, think this, I think sometimes you can hide way easier in New York City than you can. Yeah, people in Rochelle are gonna know. Do you see that new? Oh, guy? probably New York. Do you see that new guy in town? <laughs> like everybody knows. You also got to be able to afford it. But if you go to like the Upper Peninsula, people yeah. do not. They they want to be kept to their own, and they don't want to know who what you're Bali. about. Bali, huh? I would go to Bali. Oh, you would leave the country? Are we supposed to? I don't know. My first curious thing, if you had to stay in the States, how would you stay gone? And yeah, okay. I guess there are the parts States. of like uh, West Texas where no one will ever yeah. wonder well, who you are and what you're up to. Or care, yeah. Yeah. How would you make money? I don't know. Omaha? I think I, could find a, I think I could find a bar that pays under the table pretty easy. Yeah. And then maybe eventually like fall in love, you know, start a new life, find a new, find a new woman. Yeah. And then uh, she, you know, she puts the bar in her name. Now we own this bar. I don't really exist. Oh. You've, have you done this before? Oh. Daniel, who? When did you do this? <laughs> Who'd keep, you kill? Why don't, why don't you keep calling me Daniel? Is it? All right. Daniel. It's Reese. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. No, not now. Oh. I they mean like repetitively. Yeah. <laughs> How long would you wait before you reached out to the family? Say, I'm okay. Uh, I would have to wait until I felt like things were secure. I would have to wait until I knew that my phone line was like, fine. Email was fine. I probably wouldn't email. Because this is the big thing in Breaking Bad. Yeah. You you call up. They come get you. You, You've got to be sitting there when the the car gets there, and then you're gone. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that the person wrote, do you start a new social? You don't get on social media at all. No. What? Well, what's my new Instagram handle? <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm Gregory, yeah. is it G-Raggery? I guess G-Raggery at is gmail.com G. is my dot email that got me in. They G- do not Gregory, like not yeah, first name. Not the name. person you know from Rochelle. Not Gregory. Strangely would work. Probably. Yeah. Um. I have thought about if I had to like in uh, like a poc- like doomsday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What part of the country am I heading to to yeah. possibly survive? What for doomsday? Yeah, yeah. What's doomsday uh, in your mind? We're we're fending from ourselves. Yeah, and uh, people are don't trust people. 
I think that's, that's about every, to be. That's also every day. I think that's about to be on IMAX. <laughs> what? Did you see the trailer for Civil War? Oh, I'm going to see it. This Jesus weekend. Christ! It's an IMAX. It's like fuck. I don't know. I need that in IMAX. Remember First Man? That I needed an IMAX. Yeah. Dune. Dune two. Dune. Dune, Dune again. Dune two. Forget about me. That's nice. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, no one else said nice. But. That thing you do <laughs> to me. Um, so I've thought about that. Like, I was like, oh, man, the co- cabin would be a great place. But really, it's you're not remote enough. Yeah. We do have neighbors. Yeah. But I've, I've thought about, like, what part of the country would you head to if it was, like, get, I don't know. I was going to say get to high ground, but then that kind of denotes where you need to go. Um, you got You got wife. You got kids. I'm going to be know. so far ahead of you. Yeah. You'll be gone. Yeah, but I'll let you in the gates. What gates? The ones I'm going to have built and erected. Oh. Don't you wonder about this? What? Ever. How you how you would survive if we just go like Mad Max? Yeah, I don't think it would last very long for, for most you? people. For most people. I'm asking for you. I, yeah, but there's also the question of how long am I trying to live in this? Like, how long am I trying to live in Mad Max? You think you might exit yourself? <laughs> I might try to get the fuck out of here. I don't. You would. I don't see you killing yourself. If we're talking Mad Max world, what what are we doing? Well, I think you're a very different Rory, but sadly, you probably survive because of how different you become. Well, because I, I shaved my head and, and I, I got think, rid of my beard. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a big part of it. And I think the same thing about myself. Yeah. Because somebody's like, we got to go back, and I will go. We're not. Yeah. They're still in there. I go, I don't care. Yeah. We're going to go in there and then we're going to die? No, we're moving on. We're moving on. You got to make choices like that. Yeah. And you it's, become a leader. I think you, you, I feel like you look forward to this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's not any kind of a pause. I don't look forward oh, to it. I guess it. I do kind of fantasize. Something about me that enjoys the idea of testing your metal, seeing what you really got, what you're really capable of. Yeah. Like I mean, I've always said this, like I, I have a f- deep rooted fear of prison. Yeah. Like it's a phobia almost. I think it has to do with my claustrophobia and stuff like that. But I think I could survive it if yeah. I had to. Yeah, yeah. But I will not. This guy, you won't see again. Yeah. Because what I, I think what I'd have to go through in order to like. What you'd have to become. A, 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 so hardened. Yeah. You know, they talk about those shoulders You'd have to. You're trying stuff. to survive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I can survive out there, Andy. Oh. Is that a. Uh, hold on. Don't, Jaws? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, Lissa, you think I'm fucking stupid? I don't think so at all. Well, Lissa thinks you said it before. She goes, "We're about to record, Rory. You're stupid." No, you know how smart he is. Before we recorded, he was like, "Will you do a Jaws quote?" And I was like, "Yes." And now look at him. He got to show off. Look at that, Lissa. Honestly, that's really smart. Um, that's actually pretty cool. You said that. I don't know how you find. <laughs> do you know they say uh, people who do drugs can always tell who has drugs within like two minutes at a party? Yeah. Oh, uh, is that true? Yeah. And like when you're a drug addict, you, you always find each other. They oh, drug it'll always they could just sniff out. You could be at the most fucking Rochelle, uh, you know, everybody around the fire. Let's sing Carol's Christmas party, and somebody who wants or needs drugs can instantly figure out who else in that room either has drugs based on pitch or, and tone. I don't know what it is. Why does Daniel keep wanting to sing so much? Just white powder all over your. <laughs> Let's go again. Let's go again. I say we sing it one more time and do better. Jesus Christ. I'm not hearing the cut and hark. Yeah. It's hark the herald. Yeah. Um, that's, this is, and, that's, and this is post doomsday. <laughs> Why are we still singing? How you sing it? <laughs> like, honest guy question before we get out of here. How long do you think it could take you to find criminals that could get you out of town in LA? I don't know. I don't either. I wouldn't even know where to start. It's not a. It's not wired into it. It's not that anyone's wired. I mean, some people, I guess, wired naturally for certain things, but it's not wired into our mode of survival or so where we operate. We can all change. People, all, everyone's uh, capable of adaptation uh, to a degree. But this question you're asking, I think, I think, the, when you have to do it is when you finally learn to do it. Something like this. I mean, Breaking Bad is an exceptional show, but I also think it's an interesting study in this because when Walter White decides that he's whoa, like, whoa, 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 Jesus. What? <laughs> spoiler you alert. It, oh, I thought he pronounced it different. When, it's Walter White, <laughs> but spoiler alert. When he decides that he wants to start selling drugs, his only <laughs> way <laughs> into <laughs> that <laughs> world <laughs> is through his old student, Jesse. Yeah. And then 
one begets the next to get deeper and deeper into the chain. And it's a very interesting. I just wouldn't know where to even begin. I've never even... I think I think I've met drug dealers, but you, know, you don't know like, how to break. I've bad. never bought drugs. You don't know how to break bad. Deal. I dream about it if there's an apocalypse. Yeah, but I don't. I've never bought. Have you bought drugs from a drug dealer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What was the process? I mean, I you go to their house. Pot. I smoke pot, so now it's. You no, know, isn't that of, weird? That that doesn't even feel like it should count. Well, it did at the time. At the time, it very much counted. And there was a was there a, a catalog of things, or it was just, they only sold weed in New York City? It was you weed. went to their place. No, in New York City, they would come to you. Would like call a number. You would like page somebody. They would how'd come you get to the number? Place. I don't remember. Someone See, this is what you. I'm curious about. Okay, keep going. Someone gives it to you because you smoke. Yeah, and then they come to your house and they reek of and you pot. let Despite them in. You can't. You let them in. They open their backpack and they're like, "I got this kind, I got this one, I got this one," and it would be way too much. And money. you have to pretend that you know what they're talking about. Well, you just kind of be like, you know, and they also are probably pretending like they know what they talk about. And so you're like, "All right, that one sounds pretty good," and you would just get it and you pay like fifty bucks and usually it would be like fifty bucks, which you know this is a lot of fucking money when you're like roommates and you don't have yeah. like extra cash for right, shit for sure. Um, and you're doing stand up and odd jobs, but. Yeah, and then they would leave, and you'd be like, and it, it would feel because you would be. I would, all, I would always be less afraid of this person coming in because there'd be a few of us there, right? And I'd be more afraid for the scenarios they must be putting themselves into. They never know what they're walking into. Somebody yeah, I think steal you had them? to like th- there. You, I think it was a chain. The way that you get the phone call, the phone number, like had to be approved or whatever. I think was its own thing, but. I just always thought, like, man, fuck, this person definitely smells like pot, and they have an amount on them that is not okay at all for, like, you just right. got caught. Right. Um, yeah. And they would be, like, bi- it would be, be, like, on bikes, and they would stay off subways and stuff like that. Because of cops. Try to stay above ground. Yeah. Do you remember the... Um, but also, they, it's not even just cops. It's, like, other people that are, like, that's... That, I, oh, I bought from that dude. Like weed. So this time we're going to scope... Like, literally, a repeat buyer at any point could be, like... They could walk into a situation. Where so a drug like, dealer really trusts you. Oh my god, I'm about to say the same thing I was going to say. A drug dealer really trusts you to let you know where they live. Because that's where all their shit is. Well, a, a drug dealer, but like, you know, they, it's it's interesting. It's interesting how it works because you're talking about the value of an item and the value of this item is because it makes you feel good. That's what's so ironic about what it is when people talk about the illegality of like something specifically like pot. Whereas now you go, Oh fucking, we could go open our own dispensary if we filled out the right paperwork for a business license. Now it's like, you know, so the perception of it has changed. It's literally like all things. We have dictated what the value will be and what the perception will be. It makes you then step back and wonder all the evils you've ever been told about. Is it just because you taught you were taught a perception as to when you mm-hmm. established organically on your own through experience or getting to know people who, you know, interact with these things supposedly like drugs for the most part. Like right. You know, I mean, you and I, knowingly and unknowingly, have many acquaintances who do a fucking ton of coke. And sure. you would not necessarily know it. <laughs> and right. you would just go, oh, but my perception that I was told is that you would be uh, you, you would be a, a burnout or you'd be fucking junky. And it's like, oh, but that's, that isn't necessarily the case for all of these things. There's a Netflix documentary that follows like cases from in New York City. And the first episode was the Carnegie Deli murders. And it was a woman. She was also an actress. She was in, she was a background or maybe it's some small role in Dirty Dancing. And she was a drug dealer she sold weed and she had she had friends over her house and you had to be approved they would buzz and if you were like an approved person she i think she had a guy who'd like help her security or whatever Uh, but it was just like a friday night and they buzzed the person up and he had another person with him and they killed all like well two of them survived and they killed everybody and like took all the weed yeah and it's like the same thing you were saying of like man you just don't know who you're yeah yeah it's a business yep um all right uh, interesting. I think I'd make it. I think I'd be sad. I'm good with people in sales, so I think I could find criminals. <laughs> Great. It's going to matter. I know. I know. You've been paid under the table. I've been paid under the table. All right, Jeff. Thanks for sending this in. Uh, good luck out there, wherever you are, and hopefully you do get to reach out to your family. And um, sorry for the people that you miss as you started out. All right. We wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Roy Van Scovel. Bing, bong, bing. And we're back!
back, back, folks. This is our final public public plugs and hugs with Daniel and Rory. If you want more of uh, of us, if you are listening to this and you haven't heard all of us, you can listen to all of us on your your usual this this RSS feed of our episodes will exist uh, yeah. in a public space uh, for quite a while, uh, including a new show that Daniel will be doing. Midnighter. So don't so don't walk away from no. this feed. But if you want newer pen pals. Uh, content. The only way to get it is to join our Patreon. Go over to our Patreon, join. It's yep. five dollars uh, a month, or you can join for fifty-five dollars a year. If you sign up for a year, you get that uh, free month in yep. there. And uh, this show will will drop on Wednesdays in that space. If you want to keep cackling with us, two cackling idiots, that's where you got to go to get it. But this is our our final uh, our final public space show. Mm-hmm. Um, so come over there. Join us. Join come us. on this journey further. You? See where this journey goes now. Some of you have come for a very long time, and Daniel and I have always thought, Jesus Christ, these people, they're committed. They are. They're really committed. We're less committed to us than they are. I'm excited to they see. They have it. their own podcast. What, the, what our birthday celebration will be like over That's there. exactly. In the page. In the page. Um, probably Cabin Supremes. Oh, good um, match. But uh, outside of that... Go to RoyScoville.com for uh, all things stand-up and appearances on things. I sell art over there, and I think we've by now uploaded maybe some new paintings if you are in the market and have interest. Uh, I have a special out on Max that you can watch. I have three seasons of physical on Apple TV+. Plus. You can watch. Um, and then I'm just doing a bunch of guest star stuff here and there. So I'll, I'll advertise all that through my social media at Rory Scoville. If you want to know those things, go there to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. DanielVanKirk.com for my dates. The uh, 18th, I'm going to be in Green Lake, Wisconsin at the Thrasher Opera House. I would love to see a ton of pennies and pallers there. It's going to be a great time. I think <clears throat> some of my family's going to come and nice. stay at the cabin and uh, make a little weekend out of it. But oh. I can't wait to do my first show Really, my first show. I mean, I've done Madison, but this feels like I'm up by the cabin doing comedy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's invigorating. It's cool. It's, yeah, I can't wait. It's very cool. So go to DanielVanKirk.com. You can watch Wine Club. Check that out as well. You can watch my special, Rose Gold. And um, as Rory already uh, mentioned, my show, The Midnight Air, will start dropping next week. It's going to be a, a nightly podcast five nights a week every night's going to be a little bit different hopefully you love all of them yeah you'll love tuesdays but you can you'll check all that stuff it's in the feed also if you're in atlanta i'm there right now so come see a show at the earl i'm there for the red i was wondering i didn't know if it just happened or so go to the red clay comedy festival look at them up you're at the earl or go to my website at the earl two nights uh one show each night improvised stand-up so go to those uh uh, I think that's all the stand-up I currently have. Hand booked. Rory a letter. Hand, Hand me a letter. a letter on the 18th. Hand us letters. We'll see you. This up. show will continue in the page. Yeah, we'll see you guys on the other side. It's a place for friends and lovers. Let's, Let's go, go to this letter! For everybody who's been here from the beginning, um, or even if you haven't been here from the beginning, but you have heard tale of the beginning, and you've gone back and listened to episodes... Um, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna appreciate this. Uh, this letter right here. Let me just grab it. Um, I think you're going to appreciate this final public episode letter. Quite a bookend. I gotta say, the universe got involved with yeah. this in I a strange that. way. Makes you feel like you're doing and something I, right. And I say that because the person who sent this letter in had no knowledge that we were moving over specifically. To the Patreon. So it isn't like this is a forced book-ended letter right. in any way. It really naturally happened. Yeah, and they sent this very recent. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, this title is Hole in the Roof Gang. Come on. Get out of town. Get out of this town. Greetings, pen pals. Oh, and you know what? Peaceful. Yep. I love when people don't They still got it wrong, but peaceful. They got it wrong, but I, they, I appreciate they didn't want to hurt your feelings. I, I appreciate that you agree that they got it wrong. Well, because you know what would have made it right. Yeah, Hope this letter finds feelings. you well. I finally hit Patroni status yesterday, so I thought it was very appropriate and a testament to this simulation we all live in that I came across this story today. Turns out what may possibly be the largest largest cash heist in Los Angeles history 
took place this last Easter what? Sunday when thieves made off with around $30 million in cash from a San Fernando Valley money storage facility. Well, you can't have that sign out front. You can't say... Uh, uh, it's like a home. mattress store. You also can't have the slogan "Home of Thirty Million Dollars." <laughs> it's not smart, <laughs> and and it's a holiday, yeah. so you know we're not working. And how did these thieves gain access to the building? A hole in the motherfucking roof. It's like someone heard about the hole in gr- the ground gang and said, "Hold my styrofoam coffee cup." Great callback. According to the article, it is unclear how they surpassed the sophisticated alarm system and the operators of the business did not even know the theft had occurred until opening the vault the next day. That kind of lead time. That kind of lead time. You're going to get away with it. I fucking love it. I want to know everything about it and watch the Ocean's Eleven style movie that follows. Yet, at the same time, I hope no other information is revealed and that they get away with it. I consider myself a pretty upstanding citizen. I'm an eagle. St- I'm an eagle scout for fuck's sake. But this is definitely a hats off to you situation. It sounds to me like nobody got hurt, and everything I know from watching movies tells me that that <laughs> money is insured. And I refuse to do any research to find out if that is untrue. My wife seemed to be off put when I told her I'm rooting for this hole in the roof gang, but I'm pulling for them. In my mind, it's a ragtag group pulling off the heist of the century and not a well-organized crime syndicate that will take that money and funnel it into drug and sex trafficking. I agree. Am I dumb in thinking this is a relatively victimless crime? Do you guys have a favorite show or movie where you root for a bad guy besides Breaking Bad? How crazy is that? Yeah, that is wild. Possibly my favorite movie is True Romance. It always makes me happy to see Alabama, Clarence, and Little Elvis playing on the beach to the sweet sounds of Hans Zimmer's You're So Cool at the End. Until next time, wish you well, Luke. Um, and there's a little link to this uh, this story um, about this incredible burglary. I didn't know. I mean, I get, am I naive in thinking like everything just seems so digital now? It almost seems <laughs> that you can't go get. Cash. It almost seems like a thing of the past that anyone yeah. could even walk into a place. Because yeah, I feel like every movie we've la- watched, like since Heat, yeah. has been like, okay, the numbers have moved over. We got the money <laughs> exactly. Like it's all on a yes. screen, waiting for it to say it's past. It's past. Okay. Lisa, you love the movie or the show Money Heist. Mm-hmm. Is it real money? Yeah, is they gotta get it. They gotta get. They have to get it out of there. Is that a new show? They no, it's been around for There's a bit. There's two versions of it, right? There's a Korean version that came out recently, okay. which is more or less like a re- total remake. Yeah, but um, they they um take over the the mint the and they the gotta grid. get real money out. Well, they're printing money. Yeah, gotcha. So. Cause that's the thing I always I always like in those heist movies were when they z- zip up the big bags when they're zipping up the bags in heat yeah and throwing them down the hall towards each other yeah I don't know, it just a fucking it looks so cool I to know me. they drop it in slice it flip it over pop it all out yeah you like a system I sort of do you like a, you like a conveyor belt style <laughs> I, do, I think a little <laughs> something about that that efficiency like, I get it cut it's, it's flip, a turn on drop out. Yeah. Zip. And when Toss. someone fucks up, everyone's like, hey, hey, you're ruining phase four. Come of on, the I'm pass stacking around. up down yeah, here. Yeah, we're doing the pass around. <laughs> Everybody's doing yeah. the pass around. This is something I just learned from the article. The Canada based security company has not responded to requests for comment. Wow. Do you think there's any shame there? Well, so that comes to what this question was Is it victimless? No, someone's getting fired. And is that termination? It's, and it's a Canada-based that, security. Is company. that term- or are they part of it? But I'm saying even the guy or woman. That's where you start. Well, of course, inside, you start. inside job. job. Well, outside to inside, but outside yeah. to inside job. Have you seen Inside Job? Is one of my favorite cabin movies to watch. Oh, why? last two summers I've started it. Every time I started it, I haven't finished it. I fall asleep. Why? Um, I think it's a. I think it's That's well, Spike it's, Lee. It's Spike Lee. It's his what highest it grossing inside movie. Man? It's Inside Man or Inside, inside Man? Job? Inside Man. Yeah. Um. All six lead actors have been nominated for an Academy Award. Yep. I think it's Jodie Foster's best works in this yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. century. That's um, interesting. I didn't enjoy True Detective Jodie's Revenge. But wow. I got to watch that. No, you do not oh, at okay. all. 
it. <laughs> There's now you don't need to watch any of it. And I really wanted to like it a lot. Um, so it's not victimless because somebody's definitely getting fired and how that will negatively impact their life or their personal relationships or maybe even their kids' lives is um, there's going to be some victims there. Yeah. I mean, I mean you'd have to, you'd there have is to a world prove of, this. You have to prove this slip up. Like I said, you'd immediately if go. If you were there and your job it. is to hold the money and it didn't happen, you're fired. Yeah. Well, and it could be them just at the top that they lose the contract. The and operators so, of the business did not, you're going to love this, did not discover the massive theft until they opened the vault Monday. Mm -mm. An ABC7 TV news helicopter video showed a large cut on the side of the building covered by a piece of plywood. <laughs> wow. Is that how they got out? They went in through the roof and they got out through a cut? in the side and they just put some wood up like nothing to see here is that the way is that and what they that probably means? did it if they did they probably did it during the day because people would at night people are going to call cops during the day they think you're just doing construction that's how uh brandon walsh would get away with his pranks he would do he would put up whole food signs and and graffiti billboards in the middle of the day yeah nobody's calling the cops they look like you look like you're working you're supposed to be up there Oh, here's an interesting detail. Further adding to the intrigue is that very few individuals would have known of the huge sums of cash being kept in that safe. Right, but like, this goes back to my first letter. Criminals talk. It could have been someone so uh, seemingly like innocuous or just uh, unnecessary to it being held there and they told somebody who tells somebody else. Yeah. But going back to the first letter... You have to leave town immediately, right? Or yeah. do you not leave town because then, hey, why is that person not around anymore? Right after $30 million got stolen. Yeah, yeah. Question that also pertains to the first letter and to this one. You get your cut of $30 million. Let's say it was six people, you get $5 million. Yeah. How long before you can spend any of it? Oh this was God. a plot line in Goodfellas. Yeah, I know. You All can't go to, buy a uh, car. Derek and the Dominoes. You can't go buy a car. Yeah. Again, I think I said this number for reaching out to family. It's probably three years. Where do you keep it? Walter White again. Yeah. Where do you keep all that money? Just in a in a um I hope this is a storage heat, unit. I hope this is a heat scenario. It's a group yeah. of guys, one last job. Yeah. Feel that heat coming around the corner. You gotta leave. Yeah. And they never felt it. Yeah, yeah. This makes me happy. Hello, spoiler alert. What? No, I'm saying these guys never felt it. Oh, God. I'm not saying what happens at the end of Heat. Oh. You've seen Heat, right? The Heat's the one... Um, Are you joking? No, no, let, me, let me finish. Okay. With the huge shark? No. Okay. Heat's the one where... Uh, um, <laughs> hold on. No, you got this. Heat. What do you think of when you hear heat? It's like hot. It's hot. Uh -huh. so there's, a, there's a temperature involved. Of course. And I already told you it's around the corner. Is this the one where they go to the sun? They go to the sun? They go to the sun. The explorers? To the sun? Are you thinking of Mission to Mars? Oh, uh, I'm thinking Mission to Mars. <laughs> I've seen Mission to Mars. Nobody's going to the sun except for Superman. Oh, I'm thinking of Superman 4. Is that real? Heat. It's called Heat. Is there 4? Yes, is there four is four? the worst one, right? Like the worst, worst one. Three is the one, one with Richard Pryor. All of them are great. All of them stand on their own. You're wild. They're all good. Richard Donner did the first two, I think, right? Um, I believe so, yes. Gene Hackman. Is there any party that, you w that would want to drive by this place? No. I too far away. see what it looks like. How far away is it? San Fernando Valley. It's at least a mile from here. Oh, dude. We could so be, I throw we get there in a day. We could get there in a day. We get there in a day. All right. Well, I didn't know we get there. I just want, I don't want to get a hotel room or anything. That's what I'm trying. We'll come back the same night. It'll take us a day again, but we'll get there. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. The price. I mean, what, what an insane, like to, the audacity to rob something right now. Oh, that's the picture of it. Is that the picture of it? So that's where they got out. Well, some people think it was a failed attempt to get in. Here's what's crazy. The prior largest cash robbery in Los Angeles was on September 12th, 1997, with the theft of $18.9 million from the former site of the Dunbar Armored Facility on Mateo Street. Yeah. 
Those behind the incident were eventually caught. I feel like they are going to catch these people, but uh, I don't want them to either, but I want to know so much more about what happened and what the crew was. Good letter, Roar. I mean, wait, wait. I think we get a hole in the ground to hole in the roof. Oh, my God. This what? is insane. Just all these other burglaries. They're so... <laughs> Tell me one. <laughs> I love them all. Um, you don't have to. It's They say it's extremely rare that a, a crew would ever try to break in from above. Um, have they not seen Mission Impossible? But a decade ago, rooftop bandits breached a series of banks in strip malls across the San Gabriel Valley... They stole at least $16 million before five were caught by the major crimes unit of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Stop! Last July, they want that heat. Last July, a burglary crew broke in through the roof of a wine specialist in Venice, making off with about 800 bottles worth, uh, 800 bottles worth about $600,000. $600,000! You got this. One of the biggest crimes in California wine history. (laughs) Somebody stole a whole bunch of Blantons once. Um... Really a huge heist, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <sighs> well, I'll let tell us, you what. Luke. Let us know what happens because no one in LA is talking about this story. No one is. No one is. Isn't that bizarre? You could go on stage tonight and tell an entire room of people. I don't care if it's thirty or a hundred, and I bet you maybe two people will know what you're talking dollars. about. God, what do you do with all that raw cash? That you can't. Do oh, anything right. with it. You're right, you already covered that. I guess you over time you could go to casinos and launder it. Yeah. That's gonna take a while. And you need to lose too. Yeah. Because you can't you can't just win. You can't Are you a part of this gang? Why do you know that? Are you telling us the plan right now? <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know either any of y'all. Y'all might be a part of this. I'm actually gonna start looking at everybody as though they're a suspect. Don't live your life like that. It's hard. That's what you'd say. That is exactly what you'd say to throw me off, off the trail. You're a goof. And it won't work. You're a fucking criminal and you know it. You're a goof. I'm a criminal, criminal and you know it. Um well, I'll tell you what, Luke. Perfect bookend to Agreed. this public space. Um but uh we appreciate this letter and to all of you, we hope we're gonna now see you on the other side. Mm-hmm. Come with us on this ride of seeing what this show goes through. I think we're in phase six. I don't know what phase we're in of uh, reinventing and figuring out this show, but it's still live. It's still live and it's still happening, and it's going to be happening over on the Patreon. So we hope we see you guys on the other side. For our final public sign-off, we wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Roy Scovel and Daniel Scovel.